Welcome. In this episode, we will perform thermal testing on the reference RTX 4090 in the Alpha Cool water block and reconstruct the custom loop with upgrades and blue coolant. We will also test the reference 4090 vertically mounted in the inverted Li and Li Evo. This is the vector network and let's begin. Let's drain the system of its clear coolant. Then we can remove a few of the tube runs that require cutting and dialing in during the upgrade. We might as well remove the RTX 4090 and test it while the system is drained. Let's add a pair of coarse 90 degree fittings and cool lance quick disconnect fittings. We are testing a PMY reference design RTX 4090 with an Alpha Cool Ace Block water block. Click on the link in the top right for a video on the water block installation. To obtain the results, 3D Mark Speedway stress test was run three times and the averages were obtained across the three runs on our open air test bench with ambient room temperatures at 21 degrees Celsius. At stock 100% power limit, the GPU core temperature rose 21 degrees Celsius from an idle 28 49 degrees Celsius. The GPU memory temperature rose 20 degrees Celsius from an idle 33 to 53 degrees Celsius under load. Lowering the power limit to 70%, the GPU core and memory temperatures were 6 and 4 degrees Celsius lower respectively compared to 100% power limit. Undervolting the car to 0.95 millivolts and adding 150 megahertz to the core to arrive at a targeted 2715 megahertz core clock, the GPU core and memory temperatures were four and three degrees Celsius lower compared to 100% power limit. Even with a 600 watt cable, the power limit is locked at 100% or 450 watts. Overclocking by adding 150 megahertz to the core and 800 megahertz to the memory clock, the GPU core temperature rose 22 degrees Celsius from idle 28, 50 degrees Celsius. The GPU memory temperature rose 21 degrees Celsius from idle 33 to 54 degrees Celsius under load. The 100% power limit is at 450 watts. Reducing the power limit to 80% reduces the wattage from 415 at 92% to 355 at 79%, a 60 watt or 14% reduction. Frames per second was recorded during 3D Mark Speedway stress test. As stock, the FPS was 99 and at 80% power limit, the FPS was 97, a 2% reduction. Okay, let's get the 4090 back in the case. Next, we'll use Primo Chill's rigid finishing bit to dial in these acrylic tube runs and also to shave off some length for an aqua computer sensor. Using a gyroscopic screwdriver, we can shave off a small amount. The results equate to a smooth finish. We can then use a drill with a driver to take off more length. This rigid finishing drill bit using a driver function can chew through several inches of acrylic in only a few seconds and does require cleanup. The result is again, smooth finishes and the tubes are ready for installation and we can slide them into place and lock them in. Next is the Aqua Computer High Flow 2 Coolant and Flow Sensor. The placement was chosen due to the instructions requiring the sensor to be installed with straight fittings and not angular, and also being mindful of the cable required to be inserted into the back of the sensor. We are using the Aqua Computer Quadro to control the custom loop. Let's plug in the flow sensor, ambient temp sensor, coolant sensor, D5 pump, Li and Li fans, T30 fans, and the Molex power. The back of the Evo case allows for cable management. We can use the Aqua Suite software to tune the fan curve using the coolant temperature. Stay tuned as the coolant fill is coming up right now. We are using the Aqua Computer Double Protect Ultra Coolant in blue. The loop also contains an AMD 5800X3D with an Optimus Foundation CPU water block. Click on the link in the top right for a full build of this water-cooled PC. The loop has two 360 water-cooled heat killer 48mm radiators. The vertical radiator uses three exhaust Fantex T30 fans in the back. Since the fans would be hidden, the T30s were chosen for its performance and that the Evo had enough space to accommodate the T30s 30mm thickness. The horizontal radiator uses three Li and Li SL Infinity fans in the front. Since the fans would be visible, the SL Infinity fans were chosen for its blend of performance and design. For testing, let's use a Be Quiet 12 volt high power cable and plug it into the reference RTX 4090. To obtain the testing results, the Evo case had all of its sides on and completely enclosed with ambient room temperatures at 21 degrees Celsius. At stock 100% power limit, the GPU core temperature rose 24 degrees Celsius from an idle 28 to 52 degrees Celsius under load 
The GPU memory temperature rose 23 degrees Celsius from an idle 32 to 55 degrees Celsius under load. Lowering the power limit to 70%, the GPU core and memory temperatures were 5 and 3 degrees Celsius lower, respectively, compared to 100% power limit. Undervolting the car to 0.9 millivolts and adding 150 megahertz to the core to arrive at a targeted 2715 megahertz core clock, the GPU core and memory temperatures were 4 and 5 degrees Celsius lower, respectively compared to 100% power limit. Overclocking by adding 150 megahertz to the core and 800 megahertz to the memory clock, the GPU core temperature rose 24 degrees Celsius from an idle 28 to 52 degrees Celsius under load. The GPU memory temperature rose 23 degrees Celsius from an idle 32 to 55 degrees Celsius under load. The 100% power limit is at 450 watts. Reducing the power limit to 80% reduces the wattage for 420 at 93% to 355 at 79%, a 65 watt or 15% reduction. Frames per second was recorded during 3D Mark Speedway stress test. As stock, the FPS was 99, and at 80% power limit, the FPS was 96, a 3 FPS or 3% reduction. Like the video by clicking the like button. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Channel. This is the Vector Network. Please click on the bell for a notification when the next episode airs. Click on the links here for more videos, including one dedicated to the studio that produces this content. Thank you, and I'll see you at the next episode.